Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Pastor Michael Jenkins, and welcome to the Wednesday night, Cutting It Right Bible Study. Once again, coming to the word for your heart and for your soul. We pray that all is well with you tonight. We are coming to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As always, we are streaming right now live over Facebook, over YouTube, over Periscope, slash Twitter, and over Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. You go there, you'll find all of our podcasts there. Uh, we do produce several other podcasts, and we pray that you'll go there. And you will peruse and you will find something to your liking that will bless you spiritually. You can also go to our website at that's the word.org. While you're there, don't forget uh, about our blog. And you can also go to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is That's the Word Ministries. That's That's the Word Ministries. Or you can just type in Pastor Michael Jakes and I'll bring you right there. Amen. And so we bless the name of the Lord and we thank him for what he is doing in our midst. Uh, we know that only he is able to do. Uh, as scripture says, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above, that is above all that we ask or think. And so we bless his name and we thank him for uh, his presence <clears throat> because we serve a good God. We serve a good God. Well, tonight, tonight we're going to get underway with a brand new study series, a brand new study series entitled Set Apart, Set Apart. We're going to be looking at the intricacies and the blessings of sanctification. What is sanctification? It's a phrase that is thrown around quite liberally in the Christian community. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, we're going to find out what exactly it means to be sanctified. Uh, it is not as simple and cut and dry as many uh, might make it to be. Uh, so we want to uh, hone in and talk about and study what it means to be sanctified sanctified and and it's it's a there's a lot to it amen so we're going to pray and we're going to get right into our study for tonight if you are watching over facebook we ask that you share this page that others also may be blessed also if you're watching over periscope you can retweet that others also may be blessed and so we pray that you'll take the time out to do that pray along with me right now lord we bless your name we thank you once again for giving us this opportunity we pray for the next few minutes lord that you might be the silent listener to all that goes on. And Lord, I pray that you will be the teacher. Lord Jesus, as your word is opened up even right now. Lord, have your way. Draw those who need to hear this word to this place on the World Wide Web right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> We're talking about sanctification. Sanctification. And just let me start with something very basic. What is the meaning of sanctification? What is the meaning of sanctification? Sanctification means to be set apart. It means to be set apart. Uh, that's a very simple meaning. Uh, it means let, let's well let's go to scripture. We're gonna be going we're gonna be going through quite a bit of scripture on tonight. And if you have your Bible, uh, you can open up right now to the book of Colossians, chapter number one, and verse number thirteen. Chapter one and verse number thirteen. Here's what it says who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. There, that verse is talking about a, a transference, a transference from one kingdom to another. That transference between one kingdom and another is the act of, the act of sanctification. It's what it means, the word what it means to be set apart. When he saves us, he sets us apart. We become holy. Now, tonight's lesson, we're going to be talking about the stages of sanctification. We're going to be setting the stages. <laughs> setting the stages in this, our first lesson. And here's what you need to know. There are three stages to sanctification. There are three tenses to sanctification. Let's start with the tenses first. The three tenses of sanctification are past, present, and future. We have been declared sanctified. That's the past. When you got saved, we are presently becoming sanctified. And thirdly, we will be made sanctified. That's future. All right. Now, I know that's a lot. 
That sounds confusing, but it's really not. There are three tenses to sanctification, past, present, and future. Now, let me reword it as we begin talking about the three stages or three phases of sanctification. Number one, there is positional sanctification. Let's talk about positional sanctification for a bit. You are, at this very moment, if you're born again, if you're born again, and let me just say, the only people that are sanctified in this world are those who have been born again. Let me say it in a theological way. No one is sanctified before they become justified. Justification is what happens when you are born again. Justification happens when the Spirit of God comes into your life and you become a new creation. You have been justified. The word justified simply means that you have been made righteous. It's God declaring you righteous. That is justification. And so unless someone has been justified, they cannot become sanctified. Now, another word for sanctified, we sanctified and sanctification is the is the big word. That's the big word. Set apart describes what that big word means. But there's another word that means the very same thing, just a different word. And that's the word holy. Holy. We've all heard of the word holy before. The word holy comes from the same root word in the Greek language. It comes from the same root word as sanctified. It means the same thing. If you are sanctified, it means that you are holy. They all mean the same thing. And it means that you are set apart. Set apart, sanctified, holy. Three words with the identical meaning. Identical meaning. Now, let's go back to this positional sanctification. The moment you got saved, the moment you became born again, the moment you said yes to Jesus, you were saved. You were born again. At that very moment, the Spirit of God came into your life you receive the divine nature and everything about you begins to change. Everything about you. But, at the, <clears throat> excuse me, at that very time that you are declared righteous because of the justification that has just happened, you also become sanctified. That is your position. Right now, this very moment, if you're a Christian, you are sanctified. And so when the old ladies used to stand up in church and testify that I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, if they were truly saved, then they were not lying. They are sanctified. They are sanctified. Now, as we get through, as we go through these lessons in the next several weeks, we're going to come to a conclusion. You're going to see that sanctification is not all that you might think it is and how we attain to sanctification. But suffice it to say for tonight, you are sanctified. I am sanctified. Regardless of the day that you had, regardless of what happened in your life, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of the temptation that you might have fallen to, regardless of what the devil may be trying to bring into your life, you are sanctified. This is a fact that cannot be overturned. You are automatically sanctified. Another verse that describes this is 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 and verse number 9, where it says that ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people or, or a special people that should show forth the praises of him. Here it comes. Who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once again, the act of taking someone out of one place and bringing them to another explains the idea of being set apart. Taking you from one realm and placing you in another. That's the, that's the spiritual act of sanctification. But it means, as we will find out, so much more. So much more. So, when we talk about positional sanctification, it simply means that you are presently sanctified. That's your position. That is your position. Now, 
there's another, well, let, let, let's go to some scripture verses first, and then we will continue talking about uh, the different stages of sanctification. Here's what it says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. You are holy. Right at this very moment, you are holy. Now, I know that some have a hard time uh, believing that sometimes, and you may have a hard time understanding that sometimes, but you are holy. See, we don't associate the word holy with the word sanctified all the time because many people don't even know that there's no... <coughs> Excuse me. Many people don't even, do not even know that there is no difference between the two words. Many people don't know this. So if I say that I'm holy, I'm not trying to say that I'm better than somebody else. I'm talking about my actual position in Christ. As he sees me, I am holy. That's my position. I am a child of God. And no one can pluck me out of his hand and I have no aspirations of stepping out of his hand. I am holy. I am sanctified. Now, there's another verse. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Power verse. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 11. Here's what it says. And such were some of you. You have to read the previous verse to find out what he's talking about. He runs down a whole list of, of sins and, and wickednesses that people do. He says, and such were some of you, but, he says, ye were washed, but ye are sanctified. That's talking about past tense. You were well, rather, you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, my position right now in Christ is that I am holy. Holy. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to know that regardless of what the enemy has told you about yourself, regardless of what the enemy, regardless of how the enemy tries to tie in your present situation with his lies, regardless of how he tries to twist uh, the things that have happened in your life, if you are a child of God, you are holy. I want to say that. You are holy. I know. I know. Sin is having its way in your life. You don't understand. You don't understand what's going on. You're struggling. You're having a difficult time. You are holy. You are God's child. This is your position. You see, your position does not always match with your condition. Now, as we move on to our next to our next stage of sanctification, you will see that your condition as a Christian will sometimes go up and down. Sometimes you're here, sometimes you're here, sometimes you're way down here. That's not the way it should be, but that's the way it will be at times, but you are holy. You're not always going to feel holy. You're not always going to do holy things. Here's what does not happen. When you sin, the Lord does not snatch his spirit away, snatch your salvation away and tell you, you don't belong to me anymore. You're no longer sanctified. You're no longer holy. I don't want you anymore. That's what does not happen when you sin. If that were the case, then none of us would be saved. All of us would be getting saved daily all over again. And that is not the case. That is not the case. My position in Christ is that I am holy. And we want our condition to match our position. But the truth is, we're, we are going to spend our life trying to attain to the level of of our position in Christ which is glorious we're not going to make it let me be honest you're not going to attain perfection in this life there's no chance no chance but scripture tells us be ye holy 
as your heavenly father is holy. And so we have something to attain to. We want to please him in all that we do and all that we say. All that we do and all that we say. Now let me give you another word that goes along with this word sanctified. Along with this word sanctified and along with this word holy, there comes another word that comes from the same root. And this is the word that is really going to expand your understanding. You are, not only are you sanctified, not only are you holy, but you are also a saint. Uh-oh. Yes, you are a saint. You don't know, Pastor Michael. You don't know what's going on. I don't feel like a saint. Some days you're not going to feel like a saint. Not the point. The point is that a saint is someone who is holy. A holy person is someone who has been sanctified due to your position in Christ. You're saved. If his spirit is living in you, you are a saint. All you have to do is go to the beginning of several books in the New Testament where the Apostle Paul is writing to different churches and he writes them to the saints in this place and the saints at that place. Who do you think he's talking to? He's talking to the Christian people. He's talking to those who have become born again in his travels through his preaching. The saints, the saints, at the end of many of his letters, the saints of this place, they greet you. The saints, the other brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, you are a saint. Yes. Don't try to fight against it. Don't try to wonder about it. If you are in Christ, that is your position. Now, we know that Catholicism, Catholicism says that saints have to be venerated and saints have to be lifted up. And many times after they die, they look at their body of work and they make a, they take some sort of a vote and they, they designate that particular individual a saint. That's not how it works, ladies and gentlemen. That's not how it works. You don't wait until you die to become a saint. You don't wait until 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 years after your death and a body of men look at your work that you did on earth and decide to declare you a saint. That's not, that is not biblical at all. You are a saint the moment that you accept Jesus into your life. The moment you become born again, the moment he forgives you of your sins, the moment you repent and confess your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a saint right now. So right now, what have we learned? You are sanctified right now. You are holy right now. You are a saint right now, right now. That's who you are in Christ. That's who you are in Christ. That is your position. Now, there's another stage. There's another, there's another stage. One stage leads to another. Now, we've been talking so far about our position, who we are, our standing in Christ. That's who we are. The next stage of sanctification and they are all these are simultaneous you are you are you are uh you are positionally sanctified but now there is progressive sanctification progressive sanctification and progressive sanctification is sometimes called continual sanctification it's sometimes called experiential sanctification but for our lessons we will call it progressive what is progressive sanctification? Progressive sanctification is where you are right now. I'm not talking about your position. I'm talking about in your daily practical living. What you do on a daily basis. The choices you make. The sins you do or do not commit. This is progressive sanctification. It's called spiritual growth. The Bible says that we should grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Sanctification, progressive sanctification, is the way we grow. It's basically, and a bulk of our 
lessons uh, coming up in the next several weeks are going to deal with this. What it comes down to is progressive sanctification is all about how we live for God. How do you live for God? You get saved. Now what? Now what? What do you do? Do you just start going to church every Sunday now? You just start reading your Bible as as when you whenever you get a chance. Do you just decide you not now you're gonna you want to pray more? What? How do you live for God? How do you do it? Well, we're gonna be talking about this. How to live for God? That is progressive sanctification. Here's what it says in Philippians. Philippians uh, chapter number two, starting in verse number twelve. It says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There are things that we need to do. Now, we're going to talk about those things. They play a part. They play a part. But we need to make sure how we address the things that we do. I'm talking about the spiritual disciplines. I'm talking about reading and praying and fasting and witnessing. All of these are the spiritual disciplines that we should be involved in. You will be, you, you will, you cause yourself much grief if you do not read your Bible. You make yourself a pawn of the enemy, not just a pawn, but you may become a victim of false teaching if you don't read the word for yourself and know what it says. A victim. You will, you can become a victim. And so you need to be a Christian that is biblically sound. You need to read what scripture says. You need to pray. If you're going to be a, quote, successful Christian, you need to pray. You need to have daily prayer time. You need to make time to pray. Oh, yes. There will be times that the Lord will ask you to fast. We fast for different reasons, and God has a reason for asking us to fast many times. And witnessing. We are called to go and preach the gospel. That doesn't mean standing behind the pulpit and preaching. Tell other people about Jesus. That's witnessing. And so all of these things are, are the things that the normal Christian, and I use the word normal, the basic normal Christian, these are the activities that every Christian should be involved in. But we have to make sure, and we're not going to get into it all tonight at all, but you have to make sure that these things do not become a law in your life. I'm going to drop that right there. Do not allow those things to become law in your life. I.e., do not put your faith in the doing of your things, of your disciplines. Do not put your faith there. I'm going to leave that right there. We're talking about progressive sanctification. How we live for God. We're talking about the stages, the three stages of sanctification, okay? Progressive sanctification is the process whereby we daily become more and more like Jesus. We become more and more like Jesus. Romans chapter 6, we're going to be doing, we're going to spend a lot of time in Romans chapter 6. To find out how do we actually live for God. We're going to be in Romans chapter number 7. We're going to be in the book of Galatians. We're going to take time to study this whole thing of progressive sanctification. Which is spiritual growth. Which is how we live for God. How we live for God. And many people, many people, all of us have gotten lost from time to time in making the spiritual disciplines that we do and turning them into law. Turning them into law. That's not something that we should do. Let me go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 20. We're going to read four verses. 
but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, it's talking about what you need to do, that you put off concerning your former conversation or lifestyle or conduct. The old man, that's the flesh, that's the old person he used to be, which grows or is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Created, created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Progressive sanctification. Little by little, we become more and more like him. More and more like him. As we spend, once again, the spiritual disciplines play a part. As you spend more time with him, as you do read your word, you cannot neglect your word. You cannot neglect the place of prayer. You cannot neglect these things. They are basic necessities. You need them in your life. But don't make them a law. Don't turn them into a law. We are good at turning our disciplines into law. If I don't do this, then God is going to be through this. If I don't, if I don't go here, don't turn your disciplines into law. Romans 8.29, talking about progressive sanctification. For he whom for whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. This is progressive sanctification. We are becoming more and more like Jesus. More and more like Jesus. Romans 8 and verse number 13. For if you live according or live after the flesh, you shall die. But if by the spirit do you uh, mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So this is giving us instruction. Our body needs to die. Our, our fleshly body needs to die. I'm not talking about our skin. I'm talking about the deeds of the flesh need to die. We have to put them to death. There's only one way to put them to death. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to jump ahead. There's only one way to put them to death. We have to have properly placed faith. We have to have our faith properly placed. It's not in what you do. It's in what you believe. What you believe. I saw I saw a, a, a person uh, on Christian television several years ago. And they began talking about the power of God. They began talking about uh, sanctification in one way. And I didn't find a fault in anything that they were saying. They were talking about that, you know, that sanctification is something that's needed. They, they, they weren't saying anything that was off base doctrinally. No. Not until the very end. Not until the very end. The lady picked up some sort of material prayer cloth and said that your deliverance your deliverance is in this cloth and told the people to dial the number and send away for this free cloth because it would be their deliverance and and I and I, I was mesmerized I had to stay and watch the end I had to stay and watch the end even though now I knew this 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 is not right it slowly began to, what the individual was saying slowly began to deteriorate as it came out of their mouth. Little by little, it started to go down. And when they picked up that piece of material and said that that piece of material was their deliverance, it, that was it. They were totally exposed. You see, deliverance doesn't come in an object. Deliverance doesn't come in an in, in animate object. Okay, deliverance comes 
comes when your faith is in Christ Jesus alone. Not faith in a thing. Not faith in a piece of material. Some churches, they take a piece of material and they throw it over you. And this means that, I, don't, I really don't know what it means. Maybe it means that God is going to deliver, that God is going to heal you. I don't know what it means. But I see people reaching for it. When people begin to pray, all of a sudden they reach for they reach for the cloth because they, they think that it's some, I really think they think it's some power in it. I was speaking to someone, a young person, several years back, uh, who had seen this take place all their life since a young person, since they were since they were very young. And now they were a teenager, and and I, I made a point. I said there is no power in somebody throwing a particular cloth over you. And this young person, a young person, a teenager, said, yes, there is. Yes, there is. See, that young person had already been trained, already been see, had seen so much. There is no power in a piece of material, ladies and gentlemen. There's no power in a prayer shawl. If you pray in a prayer shawl, it doesn't make you more holy. It doesn't make God see you better. It doesn't make him clap his hand and say, very good, I'm glad you have that on. It, it doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. Nothing. I'm going to say it again. Nothing. It means nothing. Did I, did I say that too many times? It means nothing. There is no power in a, in a prayer shawl. Whether you put it over your head, whether you put it on your shoulder, whether you wrap it around your waist, there's no power in it. There's no power in it. And so we must make sure that we stay close. Stay close. Stay in scripture. Don't, don't do things because someone else does it. Don't. Make sure you know why you're doing something. Make sure you know the reason why you are doing it. And don't just jump to conclusions. There is no power in a prayer shawl over your shoulder, on your head, around your waist. No power. No power. Power comes when your faith is properly placed in Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross. That's where power is. Okay? Now, progressive sanctification is not optional. It is what you should be. It is what you are. Now, there are going to be different levels now. Some folk do not grow. Some folk do not grow spiritually. Why don't some people grow spiritually? Some people uh, don't grow spiritually because they have a false way of sanctification. A false way of sanctification. Okay, And having a false way of sanctification means that you're not going to grow. Means that you're not going to grow. Okay? Can a person be saved and not progress well in sanctification? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because of, number one, misplaced faith. Number two, because of a lack of the word of God in their life. There are many reasons why a person will not go to the next level, spiritually speaking. Why they remain, remain carnal and remain babies. Hear the scripture from Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 12. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 12. It says, For when for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. There are individuals who are still drinking milk, who have been saved for 10, 20 years. And they are still drinking milk. In other words, they are still stuck in the first principles of the oracles of God. They are still living in the basics. Living in the basics. They do not know what sanctification is all about. They do not know what justification is. They do not understand glorification. They do not understand any of these types of things because they have never grown spiritually. There's a lack of Bible reading. There's a lack of Bible study. They don't have it be for one reason or another. For one reason or another. 
You tell me the reason why people will not read their Bible. No time, too busy. I can't understand it. There are, a, there are multiple reasons why individuals do not grow spiritually. But yet, they're in church every week. They praise, they worship, they shout, they sing, they dance, but they don't know square one what the Bible says. Oh, they, oh yes. Let's sing a song, yes. Yes. Let's pray loud, yes. Let's shout, let's dance, yes, I'm ready. Let's sit down, read, let's have Bible study. I'll sit over here in the corner, I'll wait till y'all finish. Oh yeah, I've seen it. I still see it. So we have to come out of that kind of lethargy. We must, we must grow spiritually. We must grow spiritually. Here's what it says, 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verses 1 to 4. And I, brethren, could not speak to you, this is Paul speaking, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet, neither yet, now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? And so what is he saying there? What is he saying there? He's saying that he has so much more that he wants to share, so much more that he wants to give them. He wants to feed them strong meat. He wants to move on to the greater things of God. He wants to look, he wants to move on to some higher principles, but they are yet stuck in the first principles because he says you are carnal. And the reason why he says that they're carnal is because there's still envy, there's still jealousy, or there's still divisions and strife. All of these things are among you. That means you are still babies. I like him. I don't like her. Still babies in Christ, but been saved for multiple, multiple years. And this is a problem. It's a problem. He says, you're carnal. He says, you're carnal. First Corinthians chapter number 15. We'll go along with this. First Corinthians uh, chapter number 15 and verse number 20. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 20. Take a moment to get there. Here's what it says. But now is Christ risen from the dead. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead. That is not the right verse. That is not the right verse. All right. That's not the right verse that goes with this. All right. So there is a, there is a carnal, a carnalness, if I can use that uh, phrase, there is a carnalness uh, that is within an individual who refuses to grow, who refuses to grow. And progressive sanctification ought not be, it is not optional. But yet, it is optional because people choose whether they want to grow. People think that just being in church, just singing and dancing and shouting and praising, nothing wrong with praising God, just doing these things is enough. That's the sum total of their Christian life. And it's, that's a problem. What does the Bible say? Oh, I know what the Bible says because I I listen to what the preacher says. I listen to what the different preachers say. Well, see, you got to be careful. See, it's nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong with listening to what the preacher says. Not a thing wrong with what the preacher says, but make sure that what the preacher says is the right thing. Make sure that what you're hearing is true. 
Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 1 that there are many antichrists out in the world. He says, he says that we should be able to discern. He says, test the spirits, test the spirits whether they are of God or not. That's your job. That's my job. We need to test the spirits. In other words, test what they're saying. Read behind them. Make sure that what they're saying is true. You hear me say this over and over again. If you've heard me speak, you've heard me say this over and over again. When somebody tells you that you don't need to pray and ask God to forgive you, you don't say amen. You can't say amen to that. You can't say amen uh, just because it's your favorite preacher, your favorite teacher, and they would never steer you wrong. They would never tell you something that is a lie. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. There are deceptive. There are uh, uh, deceiving spirits that have gone out into the world and they have infiltrated the church in many ways. And when and when these these quote uh, doctrinal errors reach the hearts and the spirits of saved men, they will speak error into your life. And error is never going to build you up. Once error comes in, once error comes into play, once an individual begins to uh, begins to espouse these false teachings and false doctrine, the Holy Spirit steps back. He steps back. He's not involved in it. The Holy Spirit is all about lifting Jesus up. He doesn't lift up error. He doesn't lift up uh, lies. He doesn't lift up false teaching. He does not. False teaching will never help you. It will only tear you down. Little by little, piece by piece. You will not be blessed by false teaching. You will not be blessed by false teaching. Can happen. Can happen. False teaching is not scripture. False teaching is a mixture of truth and error. It can't make you grow. It can't make you grow. So you need to know what the Bible says for yourself and progressive sanctification is all about is all about us growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord not in the grace and knowledge of error growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord that's what happens let me read in 1st Peter chapter 2 three verses from 1st Peter chapter 2 starting in verse number 1 once again it's talking about what the things that we need to do one of the things that we need to do as we place our faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. Here's what happens. Therefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk or sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you're born again, it means that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And he says, now that you've become born again, now that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, now you need to grow. And like a newborn, ba newborn baby wants that milk from mama, you should want the milk of the word, the pure milk of the word, pure milk of the word. False teaching is not pure milk. It's tainted. It's twisted. It's poison. You want the pure milk of the word. And now that you have the Holy Spirit in you, <coughs> excuse me, now that you have the Holy Spirit in you, he will show you, he will tell you what is right and what is not right. And if that does not happen, if that does not happen, what does it mean? It means that you have taken yourself to a place where you have taken in so much error that you believe that error is truth. I didn't say you're not born again. I didn't say you're not saved anymore. But error has taken the place of truth. And you're no longer being edified. No longer being edified. You're being brought down. You really are. Let's look at the next place of the word before we move on to our final stage. Psalm 119 verses 9 and 11. How can a young man or a young woman cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to to your word. Verse number 11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Once again, the emphasis here is on the word of God. 
The emphasis is on the word of God. You need word in your life. You need word in your life. We were talking earlier. There's nothing wrong with reading your Bible. You need word. I stress word knowledge. I stress word reading. I stress word study, Bible study. I stress it. I stress it. But it cannot become a law. It can be a discipline without it becoming a law. A law. And law says, I got to do it. If I, if I don't do it, I'm gonna, I need to do it because if I... No, 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 no. Calm down, calm down, calm down. We read, we study because we have that desire. He says, desire it. If you don't desire the pure milk of the word, if you don't desire to read the word, something's wrong. If you don't desire to pray, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. You need to go back to the altar. Lord, what's wrong with me? What's wrong? He will speak. He will tell you. He will tell you. All right? Now, finally, in a little time that we have left, the final, the final stage of sanctification is perfect sanctification. We are not there yet. Perfect sanctification uh, has also been called ultimate sanctification or future sanctification. We are not there. We are not there. Uh, we are sanctified. We are sanctified and we are being sanctified, but we will be sanctified. See, our progressive sanctification, our progressive sanctification now is tainted with sinfulness we sin some we get ourselves right we sin lord forgive me it, it, it's 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 sort of an up and down as i said that's not the way it should be but because there's no such thing as sinless perfection that's how it is we sin we bring it to the lord immediately and he forgives us and we continue going on that's the life we live that's progressive sanctification that's spiritual growth but Perfect sanctification, ultimate sanctification says that I will be completely, totally sanctified. But when does this take place? Not in this life. It takes place on the other side of this life. When we are gone, we will be sanctified. When we are gone. First John chapter number three, starting in verse number two. Beloved, now are we the children of God. Talking about positional right there. That's who we are right now. And it will, it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. That's talking about perfect sanctification. When we see him, we're going to be like him. And there is no sin in him. For we shall see him as he is. As he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. That's talking about progressive sanctification. Just as he is pure. You see, we cannot see Christ in all the light that he is right now. That's physically, spiritually. We cannot receive all that Christ is right now. I want all that I can get of Christ. All, all. Give me, Lord, just give me you. Song says, Lord, give me you. Everything else can wait. Everything else can wait. Lord, I just want you. We can take as much as we can receive. But the fullness, the fullness of Christ will not uh, be in play until we see him as he is. That's going to be a glorious day. That's going to be a glorious day. That's why it's called our glorification. Romans chapter 8 verses 29 and 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We read this, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Let me go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 12. Not that I have already attained the resurrection from the dead, or am already perfected, it's not happened yet. This is Paul speaking. But he says, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold 
of me. See, this is our great hope. This is what we look forward to. We look forward to the day when we will be sanctified. Sanctified. Entirely, completely, gloriously sanctified. That's the day that we look forward to. That's our hope. That's what we can expect when we leave this world. Whether through the rapture or whether through de death, we will be sanctified completely. So there are three stages we've been talking about. We've been setting the stages tonight. There's positional. That's who you are in Christ. Never forget who you are in Christ. You are sanctified. You are holy and you are a saint. That's who you are. No one can talk you out of it. No one can change that. That's who you are in Christ. Secondly, progressive sanctification. That's how we live for God. That's how we become more like Christ. That's progressive sanctification. Finally, we have ultimate, final sanctification. When we leave this world, we will see him as he is and we will be entirely sanctified. Amen. We look forward to that. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. So, we're just setting the stages tonight. And we have so much more to talk about as we continue talking about, uh, as we get into our brand new series, Set Apart. Set Apart. Talking about the power. Talking about the power of sanctification. What it's all about. Amen. And we'll come back uh, from time to time and talk about exactly what it is. But we're going to spend a lot of our time talking about how we live for God. We're going to go through, as I said, we're going to go through Romans chapter 6. We're going to go through uh, Romans uh, in chapter number 7. We're, we're going to go through these verses that explain to us just what sanctification in this life, progressive sanctification, is all about and how we can be sanctified. Let me just give you a little clue. You can't sanctify yourself. Sanctification is not wearing a long dress. Covering yourself all, for a lady, covering themselves all the way through, all the way down. That's not sanctification. That's not sanctification. All right. So I'm going to drop that right there. Uh, we'll get into it more when we come together next time. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this opportunity to share your word. Lord, we pray that for the next uh, uh, for the next week, Lord Jesus, that you might speak to us concerning sanctification, Lord Jesus. Lord, there is so much to know, so much to hear, so much to learn. Uh, Lord, I pray uh, that you might have your way. Lord, cause us, Lord Jesus, to, to learn your word in a special way, Lord Jesus. Lord, we don't want to miss a thing from your word. Lord, anoint us as we share. Anoint the ears of those who will be listening and watching. Lord, I pray that you will have your way in their hearts as you open up their hearts to these truths about sanctification. So Lord, have your way. Bless us together in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We bless the name of the Lord and we thank him. This is, this is That's the Word Ministries. This is the Cutting It Right Bible study. We're here every Wednesday night, live over Facebook, over YouTube, uh, over Periscope slash Twitter, and over Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. You go there, you'll find all of our podcasts. Uh, we have uh, several other podcasts that we do produce. You can go to our website at that's the word org, And don't forget our blog as you are there. Uh, and you can also go to our YouTube channel, That's the Word Ministries, or type in Pastor Michael Jakes, and that'll bring you right to our channel. Amen. So we thank the Lord for once again giving us this opportunity. Uh, we pray that you will share the page if you're on Facebook, retweet it if you are on Periscope slash Twitter. Amen. So we bless him. We thank him. And once again, shout out to all of those who do listen in over uh, Spreaker.com from across the United States. And yes, around the world, we know you're there. We thank you for listening in in England, in Germany. Uh, we, we thank you in all the other places uh, that you do listen in. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Amen. This is Pastor Michael Jakes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. May God bless you.